or you can hear me, but um, I'm on the train. I'm the first train of many. So my journey is going to be Crayford to Abbey Wood, Elizabeth Line from Abbey Wood to Paddington, and then from Paddington Great Western Railway to Kemble, and then a taxi from Kemble to the hotel. Staying in the hotel tonight, and then tomorrow is when the actual event is. So I'll be supporting our author. It's Emma Carl, the author of What You See When You Look at Tree. It's like this mindfulness, really illustrative, beautiful book. And she's doing a workshop and a reading with a handful of kids that have bought tickets. My parents bought tickets. Um, so it should be really good. It's very loud. It's in the National Arboretum, so it's a, the perfect place for it, basically. But yeah, it's in the National Arboretum, so it's the perfect place for it. It's in Western Burke, which is like the other end of the UK to me. It's probably going to be like really wholesome, really nice. Um, I think it's going to be quite chill, to be honest. It's a small group of kids. Um, I'm basically just there to take some content. So I'm bringing my camera along. I've got um, my phone for TikToks and stuff. Um, take some content of the actual day of Emma while we've got her. And um, yeah, just enjoy it. This is definitely one of the perks of the job, but I'm staying in a hotel tonight. Um, obviously, get my food paid for. That's uh, that's definitely a pro of working in PR. I'm definitely an events person. Like I used to always want to be an events manager. Yeah, it's definitely a fun part of it. I went to an event last night actually for Siobhan Murphy's More Is More Decor. It was Siobhan Murphy's More Is More Decor. Um, so it's like an interior design book. So it was like her, all her influencing friends there um, in this like amazing venue that's like really colourful, really over the top. Um, so that was an event last night. It was fun as well. And then this is the book I'm currently reading. My mum brought me back this from holiday. It's like a bookmark or something. No one's not been on the Elizabeth line yet. This is what it looks like. It's very clean. It's very air conned. It's quite nice. I have had a traumatic day. <sighs> Let me tell you about it. Maybe we'll put you on the windowsill. The windowsill that is of my run here. Looking out onto the golf course. Oh, and the car park. It looks like I'm in a really dark room when I do that. <sighs> Where to begin? Left my house at one o'clock. Didn't touch this room till 5 p.m. No, 6 p.m. Took five hours. Five hours to get here. Well, the trains were all fine, funnily enough. I mean, when I get on, when I got onto the Great Western Railway, it, I was literally booked onto the quiet carriage and it just wasn't quiet, was it? There was literally a screaming child and a family. They were just being so loud. I was like, be quiet. But that was fine. Like, I just sat there working, all good. Got off on time. I was like, cool. My taxi just didn't turn up, did it? <sighs> taxi didn't turn up. Um, I checked the booking like an hour before. It was still going ahead. Um, but the weird thing is normally they send a, an email or a text or a call. Literally any of them would have been fine to say, We've got a driver or driver's on its way or driver's arrived. Just didn't happen. So I was contacting them. Obviously I'm in the middle of nowhere, literally in the middle of nowhere. And I finally got rude to someone. I was like, they're not here. I've literally been waiting 25 minutes at this point. Um, literally just sat outside of a station on the floor <laughs> trying to connect like hotspot to my laptop to try and contact them. They're like, let me find it out for you. A couple of minutes later, I get a call. They're like, who's this? I'm like, Eleanor. He's like, I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting here 20 minutes. I was like, no, you haven't. Cause I'm literally, I'm looking at the entire car park right now. And the pickup was at the car park. I am here. I am here. He was like, I was here. And I was like, well, I'm here. And he was like, okay, I'll come back around then. And then like 10 minutes later, he calls me and he's like, I'm here. And I'm like, well, you're not. Cause I can see cars coming into the car park and you're not here. Basically then at this point, the company that we booked the, the taxis with call me. And they're like, he's here, but I'm looking at the satellites and there's two car parks. <laughs> I was like, for God's sake. So we've gone to different car parks, bro. So he was in the other car park, which was just the other side of the station. But obviously I come off the train. I go there to the first car park that I see that literally says Kemble Station Car Park. Everyone is there waiting for a taxi. Everyone else, I see them. Taxi comes, they get a taxi. I'm like, I'm jealous. I wish I could be you right now. No, I'm not. I'm sat on the floor instead, drinking my Fanta Fruit Twist. Fine, I get in. I'm like, no grudges, no grudges, fine. We get there. Almost hit a deer, I'm pretty sure. Not a deer, a fox. <laughs> a fox and it's all country lanes like 20 minute drive fine i've like calmed down at this point stressful afternoon get to the hotel hey i've got a booking for eleanor rose no we've not got a booking under that name what do you mean what do you mean that's always my worst fear going to a hotel and then be like no we don't have a name for you and i was like okay might be under my colleague's name because technically i booked it under her card uh, molly holt no i haven't got anything for molly bonnie because it's a company i'm here for business bonnie no, nothing for Bonnier. Okay, last one, Mion Valley, that's our tra travel agent. No, nothing for them either. 
He checked through, I mean, the, the reception guy was like so good. He checked through all of his emails. He checked all the references, everything. He was like, last time we had a, a, a booking with you, it was 2001. Hun, I'd only just been born. <laughs> so I was having to pull up my emails to be like, look, I legit have an email from Meon Valley, the travel agent, to say I have secured the room for you. The hotel I've never sent, or the agent I've never got, the booking reference. I had a reference number, but it was for the travel agent, not the actual booking. This point as well, another story time, our work cards maxed out, which was brill. I just wanted to buy a £4.50 lunch from Sainsbury's, and it was to go. <laughs> Um, my work phone popping off today. My work phone has never been so lively. Like, it was really nice. He was like, I can see that you've obviously tried to make a book and you obviously haven't. Oh my god. He's like, I obviously see that you haven't like meant to do this, but um, so for now, like we have got the availability, we'll put you in the room, um, but we just need to like hold your card for like £25, I think it was. Um, they didn't actually take payment, they were just holding it, but I was like, <laughs> the card literally did get maxed out today, so it might not even go through. It did get topped up by finance day by a couple of hundred pounds, but I was like, might not go through. Um, but oh, after all that, this guy was so good. He's put me in a room. I've never been more grateful to just walk into a hotel room. I don't even care what it looks like. I'm just like, just get me on that bed right now. So what does it actually look like? I'll show you. Um, I have just absolutely trashed it already. So when you come into the hotel, I need to hurry up because I've got dinner reservation at seven. When you come in, that's like the main hotel there. Then there's this cool yard bit here. Come in, I'm number two. Come in and it is mahoosive. So you have like a whole living room area here, literal sofa. Um, the bed that I've literally dumped all my stuff on already. This is the bathroom here. The bed's really big as well. Wallpaper's funky and the light's funky. The TV is really low, like, I don't, I can't do this for reference, but this is really low. Um, have a mirror there. And then it goes out onto the golf course, which is, pretty cute so yeah a little bit of a stressful time getting here but i am here thankfully molly was like everything comes in threes now so you've had the card you've had the taxi you've had the hotel thing so that's it now like surely surely that is it but i've got a reservation now at seven o'clock for some dinner just in the hotel so i'm gonna have that come back shower chill read my book and try and relax as Molly was saying to me, that is the true life of a publicist when everything goes wrong. When your card is completely maxed out, when you just want a sandwich, when the hotel doesn't have a booking reference for you, when the taxi doesn't turn up. But it gets solved, it gets solved, and we are here a day early. So the event isn't until tomorrow. Wish me luck. Good morning, it is. It's 10 to 10. So I had dinner last night, I had burger and chip. Came back here, read my book, had a cup of tea and biscuits, classic English thing to do. Slept well in the bed. And then had breakfast today at half past eight, just in the hotel again. Had bacon sandwich, a cinnamon swirl, some melon. It was nice enough. I've just been on the phone to the travel agent to be like, I check out in half an hour. So please can you actually make payment to this hotel? Because I'm gonna have to put that on my card. But they're just doing that now on my taxi car at half past 10. I think it's about a half an hour drive to the Arboretum so I should get there sort of 11 o'clock maybe. Emma has just texted me to say that she's due to get there about half past 11 as well. I imagine I'll be taking lots of pictures and videos today both of the event and of the Arboretum because I'm sure it's gonna be really pretty. Yeah I'm looking not my finest just because I'm like I'm probably you know it's not a fashion show I'm probably going to be a bit like worn out by the end of the day. It feels crazy like I feel like I literally I mean I did just get here last night but then I'm like oh I've got to do that travel again today five hours i've never actually been to this festival before um or anything similar to be fair um it's a kids festival they do pay to go to this workshop i think i'm not sure if they have to pay to get into the actual event and per i feel like they must have to pay to get into the event and the other workshops are free but this one i know that the kids have to pay for on an individual basis um which means that hopefully the people come in are people that actually like really are interested and really want to learn more it should be really good i'm looking forward to it Welcome. 
then there'll be some chance for some questions afterwards if you like. If you have any questions, anything at all, I'm happy to answer those. And then there's we're going to do some drawing afterwards, and I've got some postcards to give out, which I designed for a postcard as if we are true. So does that sound good? Yeah. yeah? Sounds good. This is my copy, and you can tell it's my copy because it's covered in paint because my studio is always very messy. You no know, trees have families too. They can speak to their sisters and brothers. such a thing. It's <laughs> <laughs> all that carrot cake. Tomorrow, uh, what's that? Gruffalo. This is Gatsby. You know, Gruffalo storytelling in the morning. This is Gatsby. Wow. Got mobs, mobs and Cressida. They're sort of 250-ish each. Wow. <laughs> so that's 500 just for the two of them. The ones we've kept, uh, I've done really well. I've just, <laughs> just, I want to so that, ladies and gents, is the end of my trip. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun and it was really wholesome. I just got the train back all fine, as opposed to my journey on the way here. My dog is making some noises in the background. Yeah, it was lovely to meet Emma, and I think, or I hope that she enjoyed it as well, and that, you know, like, she gained something from it. Obviously, a few people bought her book, said that her workshop was really good and everything. So I hope that she, you know, felt that it was, it was worth it, felt 
confident with her workshop um, and felt proud of obviously what she did as well. I'm now home, it's the next day and just kind of uh, scheduling some TikToks and stuff with the content that I've created throughout the day at the festival. So that was a little day in my life as a book publicist. Um, if you do want more days in the life, I have got some on my YouTube channel so if you make sure to subscribe to stick around you can find some more videos like this as well as just general publishing videos. One thing that my dad asked me when I came back from this festival is what is the purpose of it? So if anyone is unsure of what this is or what the purpose of it is, it's a children's literature festival and so children and the parents and guardians go along. They have workshops, they meet their authors, they buy some books, they play some games, that sort of thing. It really does depend on the actual festival. This one was in the middle of an arboretum so it's kind of like a national trust, like forestry sort of place. So there was a key theme of like nature, so there was um, activities to do with insects, there was obviously this tree workshop. But yeah, and in turn we get some book sales from it because there's a pop-up shop there we get exposure we get content from our social media channels and we give that sort of author care experience as well from the author's point of view they're obviously gaining some experience doing festivals they're gaining um some kind of like contacts people saying that they enjoy their book and kind of exposure for them as well they're there to sell their book so yeah i hope you enjoyed watching make sure to watch some more um videos and hopefully see you in the next one bye